Yeah, no worries. It's my pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our whole podcast is just uh, basically talks about how you got to where you are now as far as music goes and how you got into music. I know you. It's a long story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder yeah, if we can get it done in 10 but minutes. But first, let's, yeah. uh, we'll talk about what the benefit is for tonight. Yeah. 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 So um, Cast Hope is a really sp special organization uh, to me. This is Hogan Brown here, um, our marketing director, and, and he's been with Cast Hope since the very beginning. And it's actually him who turned me on to Cast Hope, like kind of. I never even had heard of it before until Hogan came into the picture. We became friends, and um, essentially, it is an organization that take that we're here to uh, more or less take what we like to call underserved kids and their mentors out into the outdoors, like expose them to the outdoors and wildlife and all the things that are important to us in you know our water our waterways our fisheries um uh conservation ethics just you know the things that uh to us make up what we like to call the real world you know yeah. and uh um you know we believe that um kids nowadays you know attention spans are getting shorter yeah. um <laughs> there's a real uh kind of lack uh of care and concern with our natural world and a big detachment between you know not just kids but you know our society as a whole between people and and mother nature yeah. right and um you know to us we've always felt really connected uh to the outdoors um you know s at some point early on in our life when we were kids we had a family member you know that kind of sparked this interest by by just doing what they grew up doing and yeah. what their parents or their you know loved ones showed them and 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 to us we became fully connected and inspired by it and and in turn as now is you know uh growing older um you know having that passion we we now have a reason to protect it and to carry it on you know, when to a lot of people, you know, the the cleanliness of water, you know, the abundance um, or species or even the lack thereof, mm -hmm. like is kind of out of sight, out of mind to a lot of people. Yeah. You know, um, people just don't think about that. Yeah. They don't think about, you know, where their co food comes from. Mm -hmm. They don't think about where the water come fr comes from that grows that food. Uh, or where you know the fish or the the meat products or whatever um, and anyhow uh, in short you know cast hope is there to um, find these kids and nurture this passion try to set light that spark and get them fired up about it to hopefully they one day grow up to have a reason to protect it yeah uh, pretty simple but uh yeah I mean, you mm -hmm. no that's about it man <laughs> i mean chuck nailed it i uh i started as a fan of hot water music and uh i met chuck on the river kind of via social media and then on the river and um you don't meet a lot of people in your day-to-day -day lives nowadays that have the passion that that we have and yeah. that was readily apparent i think five six years ago when i first met chuck it was like Hey, bud, you need to be part of this and you need to share that fire in your belly with everyone. And uh, it, I don't think we've looked back since. I yeah. mean, you know, we we kind of have a take on the world attitude and that's what we do. Wow. So and then and Chuck, did you bring on Dan and Dave? How, how did that kind of? Yeah. So, I mean, they're my buddies that I have known for ages yeah. through music. And, um, you know, we've never fished together or anything. Yeah, like you that. haven't. But uh but Dave has been a supporter of Cast yeah. Hope for a while. He's done he's done some benefits before. Um, they get it. I mean, they understand the ethics. They understand the importance um, of you know kind of grabbing these these young minds and these young kids' attention mm -hmm. and give them something. And it's not. I mean, I really stress this to people. It's not just about fishing. You mm -hmm. know, we've always said. Hog I first heard Hogan say it that 
you know, fly fishing is, is just a vehicle, you know, like, you know, I mean, yeah. there's so much more to it. Like these kids learn, um, about self-confidence and, uh, I mean, they learn about teamwork and they learn about, like we said, ethics and, you know, just, they learn ways to kind of come out of their shell mm -hmm. and, you know, have something to, to fight for and care about, you know, and, and, uh, you know, so there's so much more to it, especially when you see kids come on board and, you know, they're, they're, they're closed up, you know, they're really kind of tight and kind of closed off and, you know, too cool or just, you know, you could tell they're maybe angry, maybe they're sad, maybe something is going on. And, um, and then you watch them open up, you know, and you watch all of that just kind of dissolve. There's something very therapeutic about being on the water. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that, I mean, it's always, always been a place that I've found, you know, a lot of peace. Yeah. And, um, and I watch it happen with these kids. I mean, they come on board and all of that just, just dissolves, you know, and next thing you know, they're, they're bug eyed and excited and they're, I'm hearing them talk more, you know, a, a minute than I'd heard them in the past three hours of the day yeah. you know? <laughs> and uh it's amazing it's and 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 the best part about it is when we start seeing those kids again you know it's not really a one-shot deal there's some kids that come on one trip and that's all we'll ever see them on mm -hmm. but then there's some kids that continue to come back and we do everything we can to nurture this newfound passion and uh encourage that and keep pushing them and and, and it's not also, it's not just for the kids. Um, it's for their mentors alike. You know, mm -hmm. all these kids come, you know, with a mentor. So their mentors could be um, a mom, a dad, a, sembl a sibling, you know, uh, a, a, par a parent guidance counselor, you know, parole officer. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It could be anything. <laughs> yeah. That's and, awesome. um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, so that's an other leg is, is kind of uh, helping build that relationship too. Yeah. You know, between this mentor and the kid, um, we may have them for one day, but that mentor and kid may be spending the next, you know, forty days, together. you know, together. So, yeah. you know, just yeah. Did you grow up uh, like loving to fish and just being? Is that was that kind of your yeah. upbringing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my. You know, my on on both sides of my family, on my dad's side, my mom's side, you know, on my dad's side, they're all Florida, Florida bred folks. Yeah. On my mama's side, it's all Cajun folks, you know, so it's like partly saltwater, you know, <laughs> yeah. part just Cajun <laughs> backwoods, <laughs> moss, yeah, swamp. Crawfish. Swamp oh, yeah. 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 That's awesome. So, yeah, it was always a huge part of my life for sure. Um, even through the years that I found skateboarding and punk rock and sports and yeah. whatever it was, but it, it was always like fishing has feels, you know, it's some of my earliest memories. Um, and it just seems like no matter what kind of phase I was going through, you know, whether it was like skateboarding or, or you know, whatever. Or yeah. You always um, had that. Fishing was always there. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's really cool. Um, how did you originally get into music then? And were you were you born and raised in Florida? Uh, I wasn't born there. I was born uh, in Texas. Moved around a lot. Went from Texas to Lilburn, Georgia, to Chattanooga, Tennessee, to Lafayette, Louisiana, and then to Florida. Oh wow! Um, pretty much all before the age of maybe thirteen. Okay. Twelve, thirteen. Moved around a lot. Um, and I found I got into music um, through skateboarding, you know, really? like a lot of people yeah, did. Yeah, that's you know? exactly how I got into Yeah, it. I mean, Just I got into skating, and <laughs> skating kind of got me into all this wild, aggressive, <laughs> you know, music that kind of scared me a little bit, you know, kind of yeah. like, oh, but excited <laughs> me at the same time. And, and, uh, and then in that, I knew a few people uh, who played guitar, and then, you know, I'm like, that's what I want to do, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but it wasn't easy at first. Like, uh, you know, my parents, I begged my parents for an electric guitar. And they went and bought me this, like, 
the set, you know, mm-hmm. electric guitar oh, with the amp, amp yeah, the the strap whole. and everything. <laughs> and I didn't even realize you pressed mm-hmm. down on the frets to make it, you know, and I, I, man, I got home and I just turned all the knobs all the way up and just, <laughs> got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> and I mean, I didn't know how to do anything. And they let me go for a, a little bit. And then next thing, you know, my dad comes home and man, he, door flies open <laughs> picks it all up and i never saw it again oh my god like, yeah it was gone they just they they got it for me and then, like, <laughs> and then they took it away oh. and uh but then uh what was funny is the next day i came home from school and there was an acoustic guitar up against the bed oh so that's nice they were supportive yeah they were just They're selective like, a quieter <laughs> selectively uh supportive but uh but yeah and then uh you know, fast forward a little, uh, you know, a few months down the road, it was my granddad um, who actually was the one, you know, I was pretty bent on, you know, my parents taking that guitar away and yeah. I just wanted to plug in and um, I was staying at my grandparents in Daytona and I was trying sitting there trying to play something for him. I was terrible and and he just came over and and he said, he said, boy, and he knew I was going through a hard time with my folks, mm-hmm. but he literally said, he was like, boy, you love playing that thing? And I'm like, yeah, granddad, I love it. And he goes, well, you're a damn fool if you ever put it down. Don't let anybody tell you different, even if it's your mom and dad. And that w- blew me away because, yeah. you know, I mean, at that age, like, it was fine to rebel, you know. I've rebelled against my mom and my dad, <laughs> Yeah, you know. I kind of grew out of the like scared I'll listen to you no matter what phase and <laughs> was in that like I'll, I'm going to do what I want phase but no way in hell was I going to go against anything grandma or granddad said sure. you know they they <laughs> I mean and uh, so him saying that um, was pretty heavy yeah. and and that was the day that I made up my mind that I wanted to play music and that was it wow yeah did you ever think you'd be doing this this many years later totally yeah yeah that but was not like of... this i mean I, I i had no idea i just knew that i was going to play music you know forever forever whether people listened or not i mean it's and back then of course like this this was the last thing in the world i was thinking about yeah i never even thought about records or re- labels or tours or anything recording like i just wanted to play so yeah, I mean, I definitely knew that I was gonna be playing forever, forever. Yeah, was, I was done. When did you write your first song? Oh, I think I was probably maybe twelve. Oh wow. Yeah. So d- right away, were you trying to learn other people's stuff, or did you just? Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how you learn. You know, I took one lesson uh, at a music store that was just awful. <laughs> you know, <laughs> where it's kind of like. I, I look back on it now and I'm like, what a jerk, you know, this guy, I sat down with this guy and he's like, okay, play these chords, you know, and he taught me how to play a C and a G and a D. He's like, all right, just keep doing that. And then he just soloed the whole time. Uh. <laughs> and back then I, you know, I didn't know the difference. I was like, awesome. but I look back on it now. I'm like, the guy was just looking for a little accompaniment <laughs> like that's all you he know? wanted a backup yeah track. he just needed a bud he's like one day you'll be able to do this <laughs> you know that's um, amazing no but uh my dad had a buddy roy Ridenauer, who he played golf with and roy was a songwriter lived in his truck in nashville for years and wrote a couple hundred songs on his wow. own tried to really you know take a go at it and uh and um he just got tired of nothing panning out you know and but he he became a pro golfer instead but he used to come over to the house and teach me songs and i would learn like sitting on the dock of the bay or you know brown eyed girl or Mm -hmm. who knows you know old ccr songs or something you know just kind of figuring stuff out that's cool that's really cool I know you're short on time. I our our big question is, um, 
do you have any advice for aspiring artists, kids just trying to cut their teeth in yeah. this industry? Absolutely. Um, uh, become a manager. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. Be a show promoter. <laughs> you know? Let's see. Now, my question would be, do you want to make money or do you don't care about things like that? Mm-hmm. Now, um, man, the music business is brutal. It, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's really tough. But at the same time, you know, the, the older I get and the more that I look at it, um, to me, it's not any tougher or it, it's, there's nothing different than if I was sitting here as a general contractor and you asked me, like, what would you have to say about all the, all the young kids out there that want to, you know, hang doors for a living? Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Look. You know, being an independent musician, we are in very much the same boat as any other independent contractor out there. There's very, very little security, (laughs) if not zero, okay? If you want security, if you want insurance, you have to go get it. There's nobody's going to do this for you. Um, If you want work, if you want, you know, continuity if you want this consistent work to keep coming in you have to constantly be putting yourself out there um you know uh, some of the best advice i could give truly is no matter what if you are an independent musician um whether you're a solo songwriter or you're a band you know whatnot You need to know and understand, I don't care who is working for you now or who's going to work for you down the road, whether it's an agent or whether it's a manager or a record label, no one on this planet is going to care about your work and your art any more than you do. Like, you're the the person, Mm -hmm. right? So depending on how far you want to take it, and, uh, and I mean, just like anything, Anything is possible if we put our heart and soul and mind into it. But you have to be willing to make a lot of sacrifices to do that, just like anything else, right? You know, if you want to go to school and go to college or, you know, be a doctor, be an engineer, an an architect, you need to make a lot of sacrifices and you need to give up a lot of time with family, with friends, and you need to follow that path and do it wholeheartedly. And, um, and I mean, at the end of the day, music's, music's not that much different, you know. Bring me the back